Hello and welcome to the Monday, July 22nd, 2024 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today, of course, we have to talk about CrowdStrike. Thursday to Friday night, CrowdStrike did release an update to its sensor. This uh, configuration update did trigger a logic error that then resulted in a system crash and a blue screen on Windows systems. The defective file was available for download from approximately 4 to 5.30 a.m. UTC on Friday, which puts it approximately to midnight to 1 a.m. Eastern Daylight Savings Time. As a result, many companies then noticed, of course, as business started on Friday morning, that their Windows systems had been crashed and weren't just simply rebooting anymore. Initial advice from CrowdStrike, and it pretty much still holds, is to reboot in safe mode and then delete the affected uh, corrupt uh, file and then reboot again, which should get things back to normal. There have been a couple sort of more complex scenarios and probably one of the biggest problems has been BitLocker because if your system is connected via BitLocker, you first have to enter the BitLocker key before you can actually boot the system in safe mode in order to remove the file. After all, you need to be able to decrypt the disk in order to alter it. Now, since then, there have been sort of a few other methods that people have discovered that work reasonably well in order to recover systems. They basically rely on the fact that on boot, the system attempts to update CrowdStrike. And if it's successful to download the latest fixed version of the configuration, then the system will boot just fine. However, if CrowdStrike itself starts before this update happens, then of course the system crashes again and you're in this reboot loop. So you're basically playing the odds here and hope that the system uh, will eventually reboot correctly. People have reported that sometimes after about 15 reboots, you will have success. Also, if you're going into safe mode with networking enabled, you may be able to download the upgrade. These are really sort of more last resort, something that you can easily, for example, tell people who are not technically to just keep rebooting. And if you're lucky, this will sort of take care of most of the systems. The remainder, of course, still has to be visited in person and the file has to be removed. To make things easier, there is now also a USB solution from Microsoft to delete the file for you. Again, that's sort of something if you have a fleet of systems and walking from one to the other, applying that uh, patch, I want to call it, it's not really a patch, with the USB stick is maybe a little bit easier than typing all the file names. But that USB solution still, of course, suffers from the issue that you need to enter your BitLocker keys in case it's protected by a BitLocker. Now, it's a little bit too early, I think, to sort of uh, talk about generic lessons learned from this incident. And I'm uh, Looking forward to hear from anybody who is affected what you sort of figured out as lesson learned as you sort of uh, go into your postmortem on this particular incident. But uh, one thing that I already sort of keep hearing is that managing these BitLocker keys uh, appears to be sort of one of the big challenges that is really holding up the recovery. So if anybody has any great ideas there, and that's of course something that also affects other operating systems and such. You know, so many of our systems now use uh, full disk encryption and uh, without any access to the encrypted disk, it can be quite difficult uh, to recover from an incident like this where the system is rendered non-bootable. Also want to talk a little bit about also want to talk a little bit about some of the information that initially was reported and uh, we may have uh, retweeted a couple of these things that later turned out to be not correct the corrupt file is not a kernel driver 
It's in a directory that's called drivers slash CrowdStrike, but uh, this particular configuration file is read by the CrowdStrike kernel driver. So the reason you have the crash is, yes, the kernel driver misbehaved, but the kernel driver misbehaved because it read this malformed configuration file, channel file as uh, CrowdStrike calls these files. Also, I still see people call it the Microsoft problem. Microsoft uh, was pretty much innocent in this particular case. It was a CrowdStrike mistake that caused these systems to crash. Just happened that on Mac and Linux, they're using slightly different architecture. And in that case, this corrupt file, if it was even loaded, didn't really behave the way it behaved on Windows. There's also been a, quite a bit of discussion whether or not uh, Microsoft should allow these kind of kernel drivers. Mac OS, for example, does not allow these type of kernel drivers and instead provides some APIs to access information that CrowdStrike accesses on Windows via these kernel drivers. Well, uh, this now gets a little bit into sort of some of the political issues around this, but uh, one reason why Microsoft does allow the access is in part sort of antitrust concerns because that would allow Microsoft to lock out software like CrowdStrike and only allow its own solutions. That was actually somewhat uh, the criticism when Apple did it. If you remember, initially, Apple restricted, for example, access from VPNs. And while you could still use a VPN, any Apple software would not actually use the VPN, but go outside of the VPN. And VPNs couldn't really fix that because, well, they didn't have the necessary access to the system in order to force all applications to actually use the VPN. Another question that often keeps coming up is CrowdStrike does have a setting for its Falcon sensor that allows you to not run the latest version of the sensor. You can specify how many versions you would like it to be behind. And that way you basically can build in a little bit safety for a bad update. But this only applies to the actual software. It does not apply to the signature, uh, these configuration files that are being downloaded. And there appears to be no good way to sort of delay these updates of configuration files by let's say an hour a day or whatever measure they could come up with. Probably the biggest missing item is at this point, CrowdStrike has not really stated why all of this happened, like what failed sort of on the CrowdStrike end to allow this to happen, I guess, and makes sense. So I'm not really blaming them for not really having released uh, more details. It does take some time to do a proper postmortem here. And uh, definitely on Friday, you saw that a lot of the things that you sort of learn in the first 24 hours later then, you know, turn out to be wrong. Well, that's all I have today. So good luck to everybody affected by uh, this uh, particular incident. If you have any feedback or so to share any, like I said, lessons learned or so from uh, this incident, well, uh, please uh, let me know. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.